Good evening and welcome to the Cathedral of College Basketball here, the Palestra at the University of Pennsylvania, a wonderful venue that opens the doors to the high school ranks twice a year. And this is the first of those nights, the boys' basketball semifinals. We'll bring you now inside the broadcast booth, Bob Long, Danny Rovey, and Ted Westervelt alongside. Guys, it is thrilling to be here, the first time that the Catholic League has streamed the boys' semifinals. Ted, they picked a great year to do it. It's been the year of Northeast Philadelphia with Father Judge and Archbishop Bryan getting to this point. And of course, Center City and South Philadelphia represented well also with Father with uh, with Roman Catholic and Newman Goretti to join Father Judge and Archbishop Bryan. It'll be the Judge Crusaders against the Roman Catholic Kaolites. A quick thought on this one before we send it down to Dan Hoban. Quick thought is Father Judge is not just here just to be here. They are here to win. I really predict a really competitive game. Um, tempo, tempo, tempo is going to be the key. Danny, it's been guard high this year in Northeast Philadelphia for Father Judge. They bring four guards in the starting lineup that are just dynamic in a whole bunch of different ways. A senior, a junior, a sophomore, and a freshman. What are some of the challenges that they bring? Oh, absolutely. Well, they're a challenge for any team they face. This is a team that shoots from a high clip. They can shoot anywhere on the court. We saw it with their upset win against Archbishop Wood on the road. Really impressed with what I've seen from Derek Morton Rivera as well as Laquan Bird. These are tough guards, and they're born and bred here at Father Judge. And then on the Roman Catholic side, it's a Chris McNesby-led team that has reloaded with several senior and upperclassmen transfers and what a job they have done. We'll get into a number of those individuals, but the guard play has been there. Bobby Cottrell, who's now the, all of a sudden a seasoned veteran on this Roman Catholic team, he's leading the charge with Sharif Jackson and a guy that I'm really excited about, Ted, Sammy Jackson in the front court. They bring a little bit of a different game from one another. Sammy Jackson, very impressive younger brother of Sharif Jackson, and it should be really interesting because this matchup had older brother Sharif get hurt uh, in the regular season matchup. Judge ran away with the game at the end. This team's healthy, this, this K Hill Height team is healthy and uh, it should be very, very fun. One other thing, and again, we're playing for bragging rights, we're playing for the number one prize here in the Catholic League to cut down the nets on Monday night, but Father Judge also needs to win this game to extend their postseason to the postseason, the PIAA postseason in District 12 play. They need to win this game to jump Archbishop Wood, who still has them slightly, Danny, in the point system. So in the deepest year that we've seen in a long time here in the 6A in the Catholic League, this game goes beyond just the 32 minutes and the 94 by 50. Oh, absolutely. And like you said, Ted, uh, these Crusaders are here to win. Uh, led by head coach Chris Roentree. Really, really impressed what I've seen him do throughout his entire tenure with Father Judge, especially with that upset win. Uh, I think we're here for a great ball game, guys. Let's now turn it down to the national anthem. A great rendition and the students singing along. Building filling up, gentlemen. Absolutely. What a, what a rendition of the national anthem as we get ready 
to tip this one off. Father Judge, the sixth seed in the Philadelphia Catholic League. They'll wear their light blue uniforms as they shut down the lights here at the Palestra. Anthony Lilly, the senior, was 2-18 his first year with this program. What a four-year resurgence it has seen behind third-year head coach Chris Roantree. Nasir Tyler, Laquan Bird, both of them introduced next. Laquan Bird in his fourth year of high school basketball, Nasir Tyler, he played varsity level basketball for Germantown Friends last year, so this is not altogether new for him, but as a freshman, a big moment. And then Kavar Kennedy, the pure point guard, 17 for 18 from the line in a quarterfinal win against Archbishop Wood. Derek Morton Rivera, he was the best on floor field goal scorer for that father judge team in that upset, which didn't feel like an upset to that many people. They're that good. Now the Kaolites, coached by 11th year man in two stints. He's tallied those 11 years, Chris McNesby. A talented group led by Sharif Jackson introduced first. Cabe Goss introduced as well, a tremendously talented point guard who had two separate knee injuries early in the season, only started playing in about mid-January. They have been so good in the time since. Bobby Cottrell introduced as well as a starter for this Roman Catholic team, along with number five for Roman Catholic, Hunter Johnson. Danny, I'm really looking forward to this Cade goss uh, Kavar kennedy matchup. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, yeah, well, I had the pleasure of calling Cade goss a uh, versatile Sal. That was, one was at Roman Catholic's gym in that tiny, tiny gym. I was able to call that game, and he put on a show. A very dynamic backcourt player, loves to find the first pass. He's not always a, a shoot-first guard. Um, so he really puts his players in the best position for scoring opportunities. Really a big fan of him. Uh, and then, of course, Father Judge, I mean, they are such a, a well defensive minded team they can really guard a lot of this uh this offense this up-tempo offense ran by the k-lights super excited to see that offset let's get this thing underway here tonight folks roman catholic in the gold and father judge is in the light blue roman catholic wins the tip travis reed hunter johnson cave goss robert cottrell and Sharif Jackson, the starting five for the Cahillites. Both teams love to run, run, run normally, but now Roman Catholic gets into that half-court look. Sharif Jackson maybe took an extra step, but finishes the bucket. And I think that's where you're going to see Roman be very, very effective against judges down low. Yeah, absolutely. A player like Sharif Jackson moves with such a efficiency down low. It's going to be a challenge for number 21, Anthony Lilly, to guard. Father Judge on a great back cut. That's Kavar Kennedy. How does that one not fall? He'll shoot two at the line. No matter if you're a Father Judge fan, he was nearly perfect on 18 attempts in the quarterfinal matchup. Absolutely, Bob. And what people fail to recognize as well is that he, play, he played a big role in Father Judge's matchup against LaSalle, which granted them that escape of the first round and brought them straight to the quarterfinals. He nailed a lot of free throws in that overtime period. The broadcaster's jinx, Danny. <laughs> Broadcaster jinx is correct. By the way, Kennedy dropped 33 in that quarterfinal. He had a night, and he is a first-team All-Catholic for, for uh, Father Judge. For a good reason. Just a junior, he'll come back and play again next year in Northeast Philadelphia. Always tough to get down here for a 6.15 tip, so it's about four-fifths full right now, and those corners, those corners will be filled to the brim in no time. Father Judge looking to create a quasi-transition opportunity. Tyler. Tyler got to a great spot and hit it. How about that for the young man, the freshman playing his first Philadelphia Catholic League semifinal. 
And the first Danny for Father Judge since the year 1999. Oh, absolutely, Bob. And the future looks bright for the Crusaders. A lot of these guys are underclassmen. They can continue to develop under the Rhone Tree system. And go far here in the Philadelphia Catholic League for years to come. Good job to get Travis Reed out of position, but Roman Catholic moving high-low to get the ball to Sharif Jackson, 4-3. Nice patient possession there by Roman. And that's where I was talking about pace, Bob, right? Don't have to hurry anything. Get your points in the paint. This is the Philadelphia Catholic League semifinals, the whole carnival over three nights. The girls' semifinals last night. Of course, this semifinal here tonight and the finals on both the boys' and girls' side on Monday brought to you by Blocks, title sponsor of the entire Philadelphia Catholic League final. Good check out there by number five for Roman Catholic, Hunter Johnson, a transfer. That one won't go for Sharif Jackson. And we run up and down the floor. And that's last touch by you, Roman Catholic. Darrell Sterling down there, the official on the call. Bob, you did the game against Wood, and it was kind of like uh, Loyola Marymount from the old days, and <laughs> Judge sure likes to run. No doubt about that, unabashed. Father Judge has filled up the palestra here tonight. A college range three is good. Laquan Bird, his last time here, a swan song for him and his first time at the palestra. Judge leads Goss, can he answer? Not that time. Derek Morton Rivera attacks the body and they call an offensive foul. I don't know, you can be the judge at home on this one. Sharif Jackson trying to get in position. Morton Rivera, when he leaves his feet, I think that you certainly see Sharif Jackson sliding, but I'll defer to my analysts here. Yeah, well, absolutely. I saw the feet slide as well. I didn't think he was in a fully set body position. Again, it's a really tough call to make here yep. for that judge down on the floor. And again, not necessarily having to be fully set, but legal guarding position, I didn't think so. That's in and out. Good look from the outside by Travis Reed, another one of those transfers that we talked about. Kennedy, blazing quick to the hole. Lilly, right back up with it. Big bucket by Lilly. And I'll tell you, Teddy, didn't bring the ball down, did he? Nope. Keep it high, go right back up. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of hard-nosed points like that from Anthony Lilly. Had a bunch of putbacks in their quarterfinal matchup versus Wood. 4.17 to play here in this first quarter. Roman Catholic off the high ball screen. Robert Cottrell, he call him Bobby there at Broad and Vine. Yeah, Bob Cottrell, just an elite scorer on all levels. He's great from the perimeter, but right there we see him drive in and just use that athleticism to get to the rack. It's a great bucket for Roman Catholic. Coach Rontree getting ready to make some early substitutions. Too strong off the window. And here comes Jackson the other way. Trell now taking his time with things. Loading up an offensive set here for the Kaolites. And that is a giveaway. Three eleven to play. Roman goes to his zone. That's a deep three for Derek Morton Rivera. And Bob, Morton Rivera, they don't, they don't measure his range by feet, they do it by zip code. It was way out there. Halfway to Father Judge up there in the Northeast that he let that one go from. Sharif Jackson with the left hand, yes.
Two minutes and 30 seconds to play. Judge slowing the ball down a little bit. Good look, though, from the center of the lane. Everett Barnes got one hand on it. Roman Catholic coming the other way. Barnes and Westfield checked in for Father Judge. That one is no good. Maybe not the look that Roman Catholic was looking for. And Kennedy bringing it the other way. A deeper three that time. And off the front rim, maybe a bit of a heat check. Goss leads the way. Sebastian Edwards. This is where Goss can be so good. Get a paint touch. Sammy Jackson couldn't hit it. So shooting in this environment a little bit different because of the size of the building and the, the lack of backdrop. See a lot of deep shots, shots that are off a little more than usual. Kevar Kennedy, and that's Rocco Westfield. Deeper still, Father Judge playing from the blue line, and that is the men's college basketball line, Ted. This team is not afraid. Inside they go, that's great position ahead of time. Sharif Jackson couldn't hit it, Everett Barnes stands tall. Kennedy without a lot of numbers, but there's Morton Rivera, slow on the closeout, and he often makes you pay, not that time. Let's see how Roman manages this minute, and... How about that? Hey, it's a shooter's roll. They're used to the palestra, Ted. Maybe not Goss, his first year at Broad and Vine, but knocked that one down. He's one for four from three here in this first quarter. Looks like Coach Rontree going to settle for one here. 29 seconds left. It's a 14-11 lead for Father Judge. A lightning quick first quarter, a lightning quick move to the basket. And that will be Roman Catholic basketball with 9.7 seconds left. Maybe a little early on that shot, so on that shot there for, for Father Judge. Now Roman gets a chance to tie this game going into the, into the break. And they're going to give the foul. Just one team foul against both teams. So Max Mashinsky comes in. He'll be deep on their rotation over the course of the contest. So he's the one that you have give the foul, make it a little tougher for Roman Catholic to operate in a short stint. Sammy Jackson with the basketball. Spins away from a double team. Edwards for the tie. Well defended by Father Judge in the late stages of that first quarter. Thanks for joining us everyone here on the Philadelphia Catholic League Boys Basketball Semifinal. This is Bob Long Sports and our production. We want to thank our friends at the Sports Fan Base Network for putting it behind their paywall for the benefit of the league. It's presented by Blocks. Blocks is a wonderful organization supporting Catholic education and they are a key partner of the Philadelphia Catholic League all weekend long. In terms of who's bringing you this specific broadcast, we want to thank Keenan's in North Wildwood. They were wonderful to step up, and a lot of things happened today, Ted, as it turns <laughs> out, to get us on the air. Keenan's was one of the key partners in getting us on the air here tonight, so we really do appreciate them and their sponsorship of the boys' basketball semifinals. Scott and Sean Keenan are proud Newman grads. Classes of 88 and 91. It's their 25th anniversary this year. Um, and it's the largest neighborhood bar in North Wildwood. So I love that. Uh, if, if you go to Wildwood and don't spend a night at Keenan's, you, you didn't really go to Wild, North Wildwood. So <laughs> uh, they have a big announcement tomorrow. They have 
a big announcement of some entertainment that's oh. coming out. So make sure wow. you check them out. There we go. I'm just going to say the word Motown. That's okay. what I'm going to say. Okay. That's what I'm going to say. Tell you what, you know how to keep the people on the edge of their seats, <laughs> oh, Ted. Yeah. It's, all, it's all about the tease, Bob. It's all about the tease. <laughs> And if you're not, if you don't happen to be at the shore, that's okay. You're going to want to go to Maggie's Waterfront Cafe, another partner that brought you the action here tonight for the Philadelphia Catholic League Boys Basketball Semifinals. Thanks to Maggie's, and we will continue to shout those wonderful sponsors out as we go along here tonight. We get underway here in the second quarter. Bob Long, Danny Rovey. And Tess, Ted Westervelt here with Alex Shevchuk on the camera. Nazir Tyler. Laquan Birdie's hit one, not that time. And Sammy Jackson brought it down. He hasn't started a ton this year, certainly started while Sharif Jackson was out. But back to that sixth man role. And Danny, as you see here, well, he carried the basketball. But he has been such a spark plug off the bench, brings so much to the table in his long, wide frame and his ability to stretch the floor. Oh, absolutely. And he's very a young player, so he definitely has some time to mature here under the helm of head coach Chris McDesby. I love the way that he gets the basket when he has the ball. He's a great spin move getting to the rack. He's a player to watch out for for years to come. Bird. That's a tough shot in traffic, but Everett Barnes had the position, and it's blocked by Sharif Jackson. Everett Barnes doing a nice job against Sharif Jackson, and that's what Judge needs. Absolutely, and Everett Barnes, also a young player for the Crusaders. It's important that he continues to play physical, especially against someone who's matched up very well against in Sharif Jackson. Kennedy goes baseline, nudged there, but they call him stepping on the baseline. So Sebastian Edwards with some physical on-ball defense with 6.51 to play here in the second quarter. Danny, we talked about tempo in the pregame. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, well, we can see Roman Catholic kind of taking their time with these possessions right there, but that's a great feed down to Sammy Jackson. Gets him straight to the basket. That's where he belongs in the paint. But then we can also see, you know, this, this contradiction to the way Father Judge plays. They're also a very fast-moving team as, a, as opposed to Roman Catholic taking their times with things. Right there, it's a, a long three. Tyler couldn't knock it down. I mean, at least to me, it looks like Roman Catholic still playing comfortably. Maybe an extra step there for Sharif Jackson, but a good swing through the lane. Roman Catholic leads again. That's exactly what the Kaolites have drawn up. They want to feed their bigs, take their time with possessions, obviously, you know, utilize the fact that there's no shot clock here. Much different Roman Catholic team this year without Xavier Brown. Certainly no Anthony Finkley either, but running a lot more through Sharif Jackson. Rocco Westfield and threw that one away, but a kick ball will keep it on this end of the floor. Is this Roman? Roman takes the lead again, right? This yep. is the first time. It was 2 nothing Roman Catholic. Yes, thank you. <laughs> For all intents and purposes, Ted. Morton Rivera has to go up high, takes it over the more diminutive Goss. Rocco Westfield, that one's not even close. A heat check for him. He hit a college range three early in the contest. From there, that may have been a pro range three, Bob. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Sammy Jackson off his left hand. Lilly has that matchup inside against Sharif Jackson. They get it into him in good position, and that might have been off the leg of Jackson, but it'll stay here. There you can see Goss' little playmaking ability there with the little shoulder feint, creating some space for Jackson. And again, at home, you can look at it. I think that swiped down, and it was close as to who that went off last. Oh, and There's nice a back feed. cut. Bobby Cottrell off the feed from Sammy Jackson, a willing passer out on the wing. That's a play that's only made possible through the chemistry that Roman Catholic has. Obviously, Jackson recognizes, or Cottrell, that is, recognizing the, uh, the cut into the basket. 
Did a great job. Tyler on the baseline, guarded by Goss. Here's Kavar Kennedy traveling with the basketball. Another empty possession for the Crusaders, and this is why Roman is so good. They only give up around 47 points a game, right? That's about right, and this is, in my mind, in my mind from what I've seen all year, the two best defensive teams consistently over a 13-game Philadelphia Catholic League schedule have been Roman Catholic and Archbishop Ryan. Big surprise, they're both here at the Palestra. And that defense is turning the screws. Cabe Goss, how quick is that? And a better feed. Anthony Lilly pulls it down with two hands. Yeah, Cabe Goss right there, the right idea with the feed inside. One couldn't fall. I will tell you guys, I mean, these rims are very tight. That's one thing about the Palestra. They are known for how tight these rims are across all contests, whether it be with Penn, the Big Five, the PCL. It's hard to have shots go down, even from close range. Tyler is blocked. Kept in bounds there by Sharif Jackson to his brother, Sammy. Goss, rhythm three. What wow. a finish. Beautiful. Timeout on the floor. Travis Reed enters the arena. One more look. How about the vertical ability? He was already on the way down, putting that one back up. It is so hard to keep your body composed when you have a putback like that. Good time out by Coach Rontree there. Speed that one or slow it down as much as we can. Beautiful finish. Yeah, and you can see this Roman Catholic student section lit ablaze right there with a big highlight play, up five. Take a look at the All-Catholics. First team, second team. What a year it was. Jaleel Bethea and Thomas Sorber at the top, as you saw there, co-MVPs. Chris McNesby, bottom right-hand corner of your screen, the coach of the year in the Philadelphia Catholic League. Ted, what did you think of a co-MVP situation, and particularly those two individuals? Well, I get a chance to see Thomas Sorber up close a lot, and he and Bethea are just such different basketball players. Um, Bethea, can, he can do things so quickly, and he can light up a scoreboard. Thomas Sorber, big man with a good touch, got better as the season went on. Um, I don't have a problem with that decision at all. I think it's, uh, and I think it's good for the league. Definitely. It definitely brings a lot of exposure to both those high-quality players. Obviously, Bethea taking his talents to Miami and Sorber Georgetown. Good job backtracking there, and on two separate possessions, Travis Reed with a big time impact. That time a block off the cut. And that's gonna go the other way. Sharif Jackson got the elbow up into the face of Anthony Lilly. 3.18 to play here, second quarter. I don't have Judge with a, with a bucket this quarter. With or a point of any kind. No, nothing. 25 years since this program has been here, and those corners are full. Big thanks to Father Judge. I think all these teams are packing the gym here tonight, but there was extra special ticket demand and hopefully stream demand for Father Judge fans wanting to watch this team. Not a good pass, a one-hander, and up the floor goes Cottrell. Contact, wow. count it, and one. An all-world assist from Sammy Jackson, who flung that three-quarters of the way down the floor. Oh, I mean, that's just pro-level basketball from the K-Lights, led by Sammy Jackson right there. Like you said, a great read on that pass. And then we can see that Pat Mahomes football-esque throw all the way down, <laughs> bringing up and one opportunity. That is just high-level basketball right there and great. Coach Tree dial up one good possession here. It'll be important with 2.51 to play. You have a proficient foul shooter on the line, 84% on the year, Bobby Cottrell. 
And what was that, Danny? You think the rims are strung a little tighter, screwed in tighter tonight? <laughs> you know, I've always believed that. My, my dad and I always uh, found our way down here to the Plester to watch some Ivy League basketball, Big Five basketball, whatever it may be. And I always feel like the rims are just screwed on a little bit tight. <laughs> That's some great color, Danny. Great. Tell you what, when you see guys start to slip, that's when you know it's going to be getting hot. The condensation on the floor here at the Palestra. <laughs> that's another staple. Yeah, absolutely. Not a sign of air conditioning in this venue, so <laughs> it heats up as the night progresses. Well, 1904, early 1900s venue, that'll do it for you. Another great feed, but it's blocked by Everett Barnes up to task. Three on three, and Kennedy is poked away from him. Little reckless in transition, but they'll get a baseline out of bounds out of it. How about the job Everett Barnes is doing? Yeah, absolutely. He stepped into a huge role this year, and he has continued to impress me with his size. And I think that as his aggression continues, he'll only continue to get better. Morton Rivera goes up with two hands. Great look for Tyler. Barnes tries to tip it up all in one motion. That's a better idea. Come down on two feet with two hands. And it's a five-point deficit for the Crusaders of Father Judge. By way of Northeast Philadelphia, a long time and historic program here in the Philadelphia Catholic League. Back in this game for the first time since third-year head coach Chris Roantree was a senior, playing for his alma mater, Father Judge. Judge won the PCL in 1998, 1977, and 1975. And that's going to stay here. It goes against Everett Barnes. Just the second team foul against Father Judge here in the second quarter. As a quick reminder, although anybody watching this here tonight should be a big time high school basketball fan, they did change the foul rules. So whereas as long as you can remember, they would count fouls 0 to 10 and do so for the entirety of the half and then reset to start the second half. Now every single quarter, the bonus starts at 5. The one and one is gone. Sammy Jackson puts it in. High low action from brother to brother. Yeah, the Jackson connection right there from the top of the key right into the paint. Sammy Jackson from close range just can't miss. Roman Catholic goes into a matchup zone. They're switching. Now into that man. Laquan Bird. Had some trouble getting into the lane. Open three for Kevar Kennedy. That is not quite his game. Better slashing and getting to the hoop. I think Roman Catholic will live with that shot. Good defense by Father Judge, but wow. a great job by Sharif Jackson to get it back. Ted, that really was the question about Father Judge all year, wasn't it? It's guard high for a reason, but how would they contend with a Big time interior post presence. Now, Everett Barnes has been playing well, and Lily's a scrappy kind of player, but sometimes you just keep going down in the paint, and, 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 and Jackson's just too good. 14 seconds left. Nine point lead is the largest of the night. Good look from the elbow, won't go. Roman Catholic looking to put some more heat on. Two seconds left, and a travel. That's called a, against number five, Hunter Johnson. That's a break for the Crusaders. Yeah, 2.1 seconds, a lot of time here to get a shot off quickly. You're down nine. Kennedy down with one. This is good if it goes. And that's the end of the first half. Father Judge with 14 points and a three-point lead through one quarter. A 14-2 second quarter for Roman Catholic. Gives the Kaolites their largest lead. Headed to the break. Bob Long, Danny Rovey, and Ted Westervelt on the call. Alex Shevchuk on the camera. Danny, a takeaway from the first 16 minutes of basketball. Oh, well, I really just love the composure that the Kaolites are playing with. They're number one in the state of Pennsylvania for a reason. And we can see with the pro-level offense they're running, they're feeding their bigs, they're taking the open shots, they're taking their time with the possessions. I'm loving what I'm seeing from their game so far. A couple of sponsors that we want to thank, and Ted, I know you have some of the goods on these folks, but you know them. They're a Philadelphia legend. Primo Hoagies, a sponsor 
here of Philadelphia Catholic League here tonight. Primo, this is why I look the way I look, because I am addicted <laughs> to Primo Hoagies. Uh-oh, where's that booth cam when we need it? <laughs> Here's what I'll tell you. You know what I'm on with Primo Hoagies right now? I'm on a ham and Cooper Sharp. Oh, I like that. You got to go wow. ham. ham and cheese, but use the Cooper Sharp. Okay. And maybe get a little side of the pepper shooters. Oh, uh, that's, I like that but a lot. I use, uh, I go to the Primos in Welsh Road up on uh, Northeast Philly. Oh, there you go. And uh, they never fail at this point, whether it's just a sandwich well, at lunch. they or never disappoint or they never fail to impress. <laughs> <laughs> One of those two. <laughs> but a, a Primo party tray goes a long way, so I'm glad they're one of our sponsors. Petrosky Physio is a sponsor tonight as well. We appreciate them helping us and helping the Philadelphia Catholic League. Great sponsors here. Check them out online, Petrosky Physio. And the entire Philadelphia Catholic League semifinals, boys, girls, and the final, the whole carnival, if you will, is brought to you by Blocks, making Catholic education possible for so many here in the city of Philadelphia. Now, when we talk specifically about our broadcast partners here today, Ted, Maggie's on the waterfront. I can tell you about Maggie's on the waterfront. I'm a customer of Maggie's on the waterfront. They have over 42 beers on tap. Um, right or at, if you're a high school student, something non-alcoholic, of course. <laughs> of course, of <laughs> course, of course. But you know, I'll tell you what, um, we used Maggie's. They have an upstairs room uh, for catering, for graduation parties, for uh, surprise birthday parties. It's really a great spot. Um, right at the end of Linden Avenue in Northeast Philadelphia, has a scenic view of the Delaware River. Uh, I think the gentleman's name who owns it is Matt Ryan. He is a judge grad. So um, shout out to Maggie's on the Waterfront for, for helping sponsor tonight's broadcast. And then, Ted, if you do happen to be heading down to the shore, I think it's going to be in the high 50s this weekend. Wow. Where, where should you go? You should go to Keenan's, Keenan's Irish Pub. Go see my friend Bobby Benedetto, a North Catholic grad, <laughs> head bartender. He's the Sam Malone. Of, of North Wildwood, Bob, De, Bob De Bendetto, who's a, like I said, North grad, Holy Family grad, um, and he was able to provide, provide me with some of the background on, on Keenan's. So thanks, Bobby, but thank you to Keenan's Irish Pub uh, for the sponsorship this evening. Yep, that's the only reason we're on the air, and it's because of Keenan's and because of Maggie's. So make sure you give them their business. I say this all the time if you like sports being streamed, you know, we at Bob Long Sports do a lot of Philadelphia Catholic League games over the course of the year. Hopefully some of you know us. If you don't, hello, welcome, thanks for being here. And, and we say this all the time about our sponsors. We'll say it about Keenan's and about Maggie's. Support the businesses that are supporting high school athletes and high school athletics because this really is what's best uh, about high school sports are the folks that support these young men and everything that they'll do in high school and beyond. So thanks to Maggie's, thanks to Keenan's for being our title sponsors here tonight. And as mentioned, the whole carnival is brought to you by title sponsor of the Philadelphia Catholic League Championships, Blocks. Stay with us, folks, and we'll be back in just a few minutes with the second half here on Bob Long Sports. The production crew here today, Sports Fan Base Network is putting you in the pay-per-view seat so that you can watch this one hopefully along with thousands of your friends. Stay with us.
Welcome back, everybody. Halftime at the Philadelphia Catholic League Boys Basketball Semifinals. Bob Long Sports producing SFBN. Our friends at the SFBN are putting this up for stream behind the paywall. Tell your friends. $15 gets you access to both games. You can go back and watch it as well. So make sure it's not too late. This one's going to be a classic. So will our next one, Newman Garetti and Archbishop Ryan. Tell folks to jump on board. At Blocks, they help you turn your Pennsylvania state tax liability into need-based scholarships for your school, and you will receive a 90% tax credit refund for doing so. Learn more at Blocks.org. That's Blocks.org slash tax credits. All one word. Petrosky Physio, the leader in sports physical therapy for high school, college, and professional athletes in Philadelphia. Check them out at PetroskiPhysio.com or follow them on Instagram at Petrosky Physio. And then you know them, they know quality. Primo's Hoagies. Fans, big games mean big parties. Hopefully some of you are having parties right here, right now tonight. Don't settle for an average catering tray. Make it a Primo. Order online at one of the pre either online at primohogies.com or you can always go to their one of their in-person locations. That's in-store or online at primohogies.com. Make it a primo. About a minute to go here before we get underway. Danny Rovey, my analyst, along with Ted Westervelt, two of the guys that call more Philadelphia Catholic League basketball than anybody. Thrilled to have both of you. You guys have earned it, deserve it, and I'm glad you're here with me. Danny, let's start with you. A key to that second quarter that allowed Roman to outscore Father Judge 14-2 to to take the nine-point lead. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it, really, the, the, the one thing that comes to mind is a transition from Roman Catholic. I mean, had some great defensive stops and then moved the ball up with a great tempo, uh, found the open shots, uh, fed the ball inside. They really did uh, the best they could to score at a pro level. I, I love the offense that uh, head coach Chris McNesby runs. And Ted, for Father Judge to make it a Northeast miracle kind of night, come in as a six seed and beat the heavyweight Roman Catholic, what will they need to do? I think they simply have to make shots. I think for Coach Roantree, you go into the locker room and you say, hey guys, we had some open looks that we just missed. Now, credit Roman, I mean, like we talked about, they, they give up 47 points a game, they did some nice closing out, but I think we also have, have to be honest and say that uh, Judge missed some open looks. Some of those get knocked down. A little bit of a different uh, tempo, so to speak, in this second half. Yeah, absolutely. Father Judge found themselves with a lot of great shot opportunities. Some were from well beyond college range, and a lot of them didn't fall. So if that, if that shot falls. And, and Bob, the only, the only player in double figures for both teams is Sharif Jackson, which we talked about, right? He's going to be the difference maker. They don't have, any, have anybody to deal with him one-on-one, -on -one, um, and they've been going down to him and taking patient possessions and getting rewarded for it. Put eight minutes on the clock, third quarter action here from the Philadelphia Catholic League semifinal, and boy, that was drawn up well. Yeah, nice feed to Travis Reed down low. Again, taking a look at that movement there from that Roman Catholic offense. Father Judge comes to play in the second half. Nasir Tyler. Two good opening possessions for both squads. Sammy Jackson through traffic, got his own rebound. I would say the shot clock wouldn't reset, but <laughs> 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 maybe someday. A lot of physicality down low in the paint right there. Sharif Jackson, Jackson, he's fouled there by Anthony Lilly, brought the arms down. Father Judge doesn't like the call, but a no-brainer call there. Yeah, definitely. I think that was on the drawing board for the Crusaders is see how physical they can possibly get with Sharif Jackson down low. We know his own physicality, so Lily trying to match that in the paint. And Lily's that guy. He's the yep. guy that kind of, he's a kind of effort guy and a yep. kind of annoying defender, and I, that's a compliment. Yeah. Um, but we have to check his foul. I have to check his foul situation. I didn't get that. Is that his? I, I don't have that foul number either. I think that's his, that may be his second. What I do know is the 62% foul shooter, Sharif Jackson, knocked down both. 
Now this is the one behind that largest lead. It was an 11 point lead after that opening bucket. Of the second half, Derek Morton Rivera, not really one to get going yet. He's blocked by Sharif Jackson. Up the floor. And Bobby Cottrell blocked by Kavar Kennedy. Yeah, nice job of Kavar Kennedy right there, tracking back. And finding Cottrell, putting that one up. It's a hard block for a player of that size. Great vertical ability. Jackson, he's been running the offense, whether he's been scoring, drawing a second defender, or distributing. Sharif Jackson's been the best player on the floor here tonight. Double team comes on him. He's such a good passer, but in this case, patient to get to the lane what and a, touch. a beautiful touch. And you see what he did there, Ted? He waited for that double team to go away. Ball fake gets the second defender out of the way, patient. Gets to his not as dominant right hand. That's a beautiful finish. Kavar Kennedy won't go. And kept in bounds by Sharif Jackson after corralling the defensive rebound. Cabe Goss without numbers, and he is so savvy, oh, so veteran. Oh, wow. Also can make you miss. Beautiful dish. It's a thing of beauty for Roman Catholic. Timeout. Chris Roantree. Oh, and Roman Catholic just doing what they do best right there. Cape Goss, uh, such a flashy player, but so athletic right there. We see him try to fake the uh, up and under layup, passes out, and cashing in on the three. That's the Kaolites, 34-19. That's specifically Travis Reed knocking that one down from the wing. Get set, get organized. Dot that three-point line, Ted, if you're Roman Catholic, because when you get Cave Goss getting a paint touch, odds are it's coming to you in rhythm. And he's only played 11 games, 12 games this year, so... I think you saw right there the difference between he and Kennedy in terms of the style of players that they are. Uh, I think Goss took those shots in the beginning of the game. It was kind of uh, maybe a little bit out of character, forcing the three. But I think what you see here is that's, that's I don't think there's another guard in the Catholic League who can do that. No, not at all. Not at all. To move with that efficiency, um, that, I mean, that just is an amazing play. Bringing you now inside the broadcast booth, high above the Palestra, Bob Long, Danny Rovey, and Ted Westervelt. Guys, it's been a good one thus far, but you think about what the end of the first quarter brought. Judge with a lead, Judge with momentum. Father Judge has scored five points in the time since, and Roman Catholic has put 23 points on the board in that span. Well, I think we talked about tempo, right? We, we can't say it enough. I think it's, it's the biggest part of this game. And then when, of course, a team that likes to fire the ball from all over the place, there seems to be a lid on it, 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 can, it can go bad really quick. Judge's not out of it, though. Has to go now, though. 549, their Philadelphia Catholic League championship dreams and their postseason dreams in the PIAA are on the line. Count it and one for Kavar Kennedy. He fell awkwardly on the play. And that's one where at the high school level, you're not going to see that restricted area. Here it is drawn on the floor. I think he was moving anyway. But that helps the officials. They're under no obligation to make that call for being too far underneath the basket. But hey, if the line is drawn and it helps you make a call, I think he's certainly too deep there. It yeah, definitely. We can also see him still continuing to move right there, going into that that uh, that charge set. So a great call there from the refs. Kavar Kennedy, after going 17 for 18. In the quarterfinal game on the road at Archbishop Wood, he's missed two here thus far here tonight in limited action from the stripe. Everett Barnes going at it with Jackson. Yeah, just too quick from Sharif Jackson, but also too strong off the window. Westfield puts it in park. Kennedy, contact without a call. And that one is brought down by Sebastian Edwards. Edwards a good kick. There's an open three for Reed. Travis Reed has hit two straight from beyond the arc, both assisted by Cabe Goss. It's so impressed what I've seen from Goss. Like I said before in the pregame, a pass first player right there. You can see he had the open lane, recognizing his size, getting up to the, 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 the basket, that is. He passes out. A great point scored there. Wow. From Catholic. If that was clean, heck of a block by Sharif Jackson. Edwards. 
And that is what a veteran point guard does. Out of control, just a little bit, just a bit frenzied. Slow things up, you're up by 16, get into your set, find Sammy Jackson and knock it down. And they're playing to Roman Catholic's pace right now, Danny. Oh, I mean, white hot from beyond. All led through this offense right there. Cave Goss just continuing to impress. And Roman Catholic switching it up, going to his zone. They immediately get the steal. Goss wants it back, a college range three. Another offensive rebound. Sharif might have double dribbled with it, gives it away anyway. Patient drive to the hoop, really nicely done. Timeout, Chris Roantree. Laquan Bird takes it the distance and cuts the deficit to 17. There's a long way to go, but turnovers like that are gonna have to be part of the story for the Crusaders of Father Judge. Jackson with 14, uh, Travis Reed with 12, and I, I think off the top of my head, Goss has at least five, six helpers. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, he's done a great job dishing the rock inside and out. Once again, we'll bring you in high above here at the Palestra. Bob Long, Ted Westervelt, Danny Rovey. Alex Shevchuk, not on camera, but every bit the part of our team here today. Doing a great job with the camera. This is Bob Long Sports. This is our crew here over the course of the year. Ted's a very distinguished and welcome guest anytime. Thank you, Bob. Does his own thing in the Northeast, but uh, he's the guy we had to have with us here along with me and Danny. And we want to thank Sports Fan Base Network as well for providing the opportunity to go behind a paywall and uh, make a little bit of money for the league, a nice opportunity to showcase these young men. Thanks for being a part of it here tonight. Stops, stops, stops for Judge. That's what they need. Stops, stops, stops right now. Has to start now. Nearly got the steal, Rocco Westfield thought he was grabbed. Hunter Johnson couldn't hit it, and that'll stay. Stay Good with call. Roman Catholic. Yeah, Hunter Johnson still a good look there from mid-range. I mean, obviously well off, but Roman Catholic will be happy to get the ball back here and continue to have this clock run out. There comes the double team from Westfield. Good contest without fouling by Barnes. But offensive rebounds have been a big part of the story. There's another one by Sharif Jackson. He's blocked. And Roman Catholic got all the looks they wanted and then committed the foul as Kennedy tried to get out on the break. Let's see if that's a spark for the Crusaders to cut into this lead. Really good job by Barnes. That entire possession, Danny, to go without fouling. Yeah, absolutely. That's one thing I've been really impressed with, at least in this quarter, is Father Judge has not gotten themselves in foul trouble at all. You know, they have in previous games, especially games that we've called. We've seen this team rack up the fouls late in the game, and right now, if they want any shot at coming back in this one, it's important to stay clean. Roman Catholic stays in that zone look. An open three, trying to shoot him out of it. And a big bucket right there for Laquan Bird, such an athletic guard. That's his second three, he has eight on the night. Good bucket there by Sebastian Edwards. No help defense from Father Judge. When Father Judge notched its biggest victory of the regular season to go seven and one, beat Roman Catholic at home, looked at a moment like the best team that this league had to offer as Kennedy gets inside, contact, count it, and one. How did they do it? Sharif Jackson got hurt, but it was a tight game all the way throughout. They knocked down threes, and then that allowed Kavar Kennedy to get into the lane. A really good call there. The defender sliding, not in legal guarding position. And this was part of that blueprint. It's starting a little later here tonight. They face a 14-point deficit. But this is where Kavar Kennedy can add one to the tally. Of course, Bob, and Father Judge loves to run the table with their slashing guards. I mean, getting to the line is a priority, especially in this one. If they can get the K-Lights in foul trouble, we have a whole new script for this fourth quarter upcoming. And a long two minutes and 29 seconds to play until we go to the fourth quarter. Good cut to the basket. 
And another one for Sebastian Edwards, second straight bucket for him. Roman effective with that cut to the hoop. Kennedy off the ball screen there from Everett Barnes. Morton Rivera, well short, but an offensive carom. What a play by Sebastian Edwards. Gets up off the ground and able to bring it in. Open three. He hit two, but that one a bit of a heat check for Travis Reed. Yeah, and still a smart choice from Sebastian Edwards right there. Just to let the play develop. See if you can find Reed with the three. That one will miss, of course. Nicely called there from the official. A grab, a hand check called with a minute 42 to play in the third quarter. In comes Cabe Goss and Sharif Jackson, replacing Hunter Johnson and Bobby Cottrell. Danny, watch, watch Kennedy to see. He, he looks like he's gas tank might be a little low. He's grabbing his shorts, slow to get back. They've been asking him to do a ton. A ton is right. Yeah, absolutely. But at the they same have time, Barnes inside. At the same time, I mean, so impressed with what I've seen from calling Kavar Kennedy. I mean, he's such a gritty player. He's the type of guy who will play through any discomfort. Really good luck for Derek Morton Rivera. Slow on the closeout with Sebastian Edwards. Chris McNesby, one of the best defensive gurus in the Catholic League, won't like that late closeout. Yeah, and that's exactly what Chris Roentree wants to see. He wants to see the play develop a little bit. And then if you have Morton Rivera in the corner, unguardable, that's a great spot for a three-pointer. What a big minute this is. Does Roman Catholic slow it all the way down without the shot clock and look to take the last shot of the quarter? Still running. Aggressive and decisive cuts off the ball. But if at any point something doesn't look good, that's what will happen. Pull it out, Cabe Goss. One of the best pure point guards, and he's a savant, isn't he? Chris McNesby, that is how you take it from a minute 20 to zero and take that last shot. Break it into 40-second chunks. They got all a ton of their timeouts remaining. Yeah, there's no shot clock, but it's really difficult to hold the ball for a full 80 seconds. So that's what you do. You start over again. Start the possession all over at 42 seconds. Now they can take it down for one they can shot. Handle the ball. They can handle the ball really well, obviously. Absolutely. Goss can do a lot of things. He's going to be dangerous. Uh, he can do a lot of things without scoring the basketball. So um, this plays into managing the end of quarters. It's, it's how you win a championship. Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, Roman Catholic, to, to piggyback on what you said, Ted, I mean, they are so deftly skilled with their ball handling, especially with their ball movement, too. They just find the open guy at the right time. They're a team that can hold this ball for 42.4 seconds and have no problems with giving up any turnovers. What's, our, so what's our foul situation? Four for Roman Catholic yep. here in this quarter, okay. one for Father Judge. Four timeouts remain for the KLA. So as mentioned, they have plenty to burn, and they don't want Father Judge to see the ball again before the fourth quarter. The arrow does point Father Judge's way, so absent a tie-up situation, the Crusaders will start with the ball. To, Begin that fourth quarter. Jackson getting an applause right there from the K-Lite student section. Obviously been a force so far through three. Sharif Jackson spins to the hoop, got it to fall. Down to the final four seconds. Kevar Kennedy. Kennedy, a decent look at the horn, and off the heel. Roman Catholic executes to perfection. They get a good look in the lane from their star, Sharif Jackson. And they lead by 14, headed to the fourth quarter. We again want to thank our two primary sponsors of these broadcasts here tonight. Maggie's Waterfront Cafe. Ted, you're a customer, you're a patron. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Now, uh, great spot in uh, Great Northeast, right? near the Academy Road exit of I-95. And uh, thank you so much for uh, helping out to allow this broadcast to go on. And by the way, great job by Alex Shevchuk getting the shot. That's Blocks, the sponsor of the entire Philadelphia Catholic League three-day carnival. The semifinals and the finals. Thanks to Blocks and thanks to the Roman Catholic cheerleaders for spreading the word. At Blocks, 
They can help you turn your Pennsylvania state tax liability into need-based scholarships for your school. And you will receive a 90% tax credit refund for doing so. It's really a no-brainer. I do it myself and would highly recommend that anybody do the same thing. Support one of the great schools here in the Philadelphia Catholic League by turning your tax dollars into tuition-based scholarships. Learn more at blocks.org slash tax credit. And if you want to know how to spell that, the Roman Catholic cheerleaders just told you, by the way, but that's B-L-O-C-S, B-L-O-C-S. Proud partner of the Philadelphia Catholic League Championships. Eight minutes. Kevar Kennedy, good spin in the lane. Three come on him, Ooh. and they just won't fall tonight for the Crusaders. Yeah, can't take a father judge bounce in right there, but Kevar Kennedy again just showcasing that slashing ability, getting to the cup so well. Sending him to the line. These, are, of course, are huge free throws. The Crusaders looking to capitalize on any point they come across. Kennedy, the 77% foul shooter on the year. And unaccustomed to seeing this. Another miss from the stripe. Maybe fatigue a little bit. Maybe you know, sometimes you're missing them in your legs. And you said, Bob, he's... Look he, at where he, he's, he's standing, Ted. Yeah. yeah, wow. A full foot behind the line. That's not unusual, though. I mean, we've seen that in all the matchups with Kavara Kennedy. Yep. He is not the guy to go straight to the stripe. He'll take a couple steps back. Roman Catholic looking to get a really good half-court set. Time's in their favor. Sammy Jackson, that may not have been the look. Pretty early, not in the shot clock, but pretty early in the half-court set. Laquan Bird. Yeah, I think in that situation, you're looking for great, not good, right? No doubt about it. Morton Rivera, I've been so impressed by that young man, but had to twist and turn the body. Oh, what a dime right there. Sharif Jackson all the way across the court into the hands of Johnson. Cave Goss, a great look for Sammy Jackson. A much better look, but Lilly pulls it down. Kennedy, it's one on four. Laquan Bird pulls up and hits. The senior doesn't want this to be his last game. It's an 11 point contest and they needed it. And that's his third three on the evening. So of course, Roman Catholic in no hurry right here. Hunter Johnson with a touch. That was a dangerous pass. They've been so good on the high-low action, trying to get the ball to Sharif Jackson. They like the matchup. Beautiful find. Count it. And one. That's what happens. You reverse the basketball, Ted. Get it to the other side of the floor. They always say you're one pass away from being open in the high post. Great feed over the top. Lilly had no shot. Has to no help shot. And, and I, I don't think it's a good matchup right now. I'm surprised that Barnes is out because he was effective against Jackson, as effective as they could be. Yeah, I mean, that was just a remarkable play from Jackson. Uh, you know, a cross body layup and one right there. Of course, he misses on that conversion, but I mean, he was guarded tightly by Lilly. Whew. Big time play by the sophomore, Derek Morton Rivera. A young man that will be playing high-end Division I basketball before this is all said and done for him at the high school level. Yeah, Morton Rivera has showcased an immense scoring ability from beyond the perimeter as well as interior. He's a guard who can do it all. And again, a little quick. It's a great look for Sammy Jackson, but he's missed at least his last three from beyond the arc. Lilly, good move, but he planked it off the side of the backboard. Tough possession there. Yeah, if you're lowly, you want that one back. You see you're on the low block right there. You want to take a couple steps and see if you can hit a floater. Right there, just a little bit too inside. Every possession has to mean something for Father Judge. You got to at least put it up on the rim. Open three, Hunter Johnson. Wow. The down screen allows him to curl to the top of the key. That's his shot from beyond the arc. 
And it's pulled away. An open three for Johnson. Stay hot. Largest lead for Roman Catholic. And the Purple Army here tonight. The back to back trifectas right there. It looked good as soon as it left his fingertips. They are starting to feel it. Taquan Bird is fouled by Hunter Johnson. I think you'll excuse that foul there. Just the second team foul against Roman Catholic. Hunter Johnson has put this game not quite on ice, but he's broken it open on the last two offensive possessions. Yeah, Bob, of course, and when you're nearing almost the halfway mark of this final quarter, those two threes mean a lot, especially in the urgency here. Father Judge, they have to run some quick offensive plays here to see if they can get back in the contest. Roman Catholic switching up the defense again. Back to his zone. Morton Rivera, good look. That's how you beat the zone. It just didn't fall. Kennedy goes right up with it. And it's blocked by Sharif Jackson. Up the floor is Sammy. Sammy's in control, plays off two feet, draws a foul as a result. Another look. I mean, one thing I've been so impressed with tonight, guys, is how well Roman Catholic passes the ball cross court. I mean, they have had heaving throws from well beyond their own territory all the way into that back court. I mean, they do a great job with their passing. Four minutes and six seconds to play in the fourth and final quarter. If you are just joining us, welcome. Bob Long Sports Production, Sports Fan Base Network on the merchant services and putting it up on the air. Thanks to them for what they've done. Thanks to the Philadelphia Catholic League. I think we have to say that again. This is the first time in many, many years, maybe ever, at least as far as I've been around, that this semifinal has been televised and live streamed. And there's a lot of vision that goes into that. It's not easy to pull this off. No, it is not. Listen, if they had an idea how the sausage was made, right? <laughs> Unbelievable. So thanks to you, Bob, for getting this off and working with the uh, with everybody to, to coordinate this and get this taken care of. And we talked about Maggie's in the last break, so let's talk about Keenan's because these two restaurants, fine establishments, and friends of the Catholic League biggest, have put this on the air for us tonight. Biggest corner bar in North Wildwood. Um, gentleman told me that about 70% of the employees there are all Catholic League, or they all come from Catholic schools and a Catholic school background. It's, and it's not just the Newman owners, it's a, it's a true, it's a bar for everyone. So when you head down to North Wildwood, make sure you check out my buddy Bobby DeBenedetto and, I love and, get, to Keen, and get to Keenan's Irish Pub and great entertainment. And, is my information right that uh, Judge Assistant Jimmy Reeves is uh, is involved over there as well as a manager? You may, are your sources ever wrong, Bob? <laughs> no. Capital S sources here, Chad. <laughs> Seriously, big ups because yeah. as of earlier today, this wasn't happening, and a couple of businesses stepped up. Yep. Which, arguably, one of the best sporting events in Philadelphia. Oh, of course. These are my two favorite I mean, nights this of is sports. A great, this yep. is such a great night. Yeah. Unbelievable. Tonight and then Monday night, which will also be streamed through Sports Fan Base Network and their platform. It'll be produced by the Penn Sports Network, and they do an excellent job. We did the games last year for the first time. You know, a couple of firsts each of the last two years. Wide open down low. They feigned the pass. They elected not to go to Travis Reed. Instead, they're gonna take some time off the clock. Great back cut, and the finish. It's been a really good fourth quarter for Hunter Johnson. 19 point lead for Roman Catholic. You know, one thing about Father Judge is they may be in this game a year early. You know, when you look at a guy like Everett Barnes, who's a first year player, and he's only gonna get bigger and stronger. Um, they lose. They, who are, they, who are the seniors that they yeah, lose? Yeah, Laquan Bird and Everett Barnes of their primary players. players. So they come back next year. Um, still 3.15 to go here. But an experienced Roman squad. Contact, and they will call the foul against Sharif Jackson. Can kind of see this out.
Laquan Bird will shoot two. Bird on the year, a 75% foul shooter. Philadelphia Catholic League fans and certainly sports fan base network fans, we're going to do our best to bring a Bob Long sports tradition to you at the end of this one and potentially even before the next one. And that is our wireless mic down on the floor for post-game interviews. We'll take a player of the game or two and hopefully the winning head coach, although they whisk them around here at the Palestra. Our buddy Alex Shevchuk, there's a travel and a giveaway. Our buddy Alex Shevchuk on the camera will do his best to make sure we are on camera and can get a good view down to our post game. So stay with us, plus there's nowhere to go. This stream, <laughs> this stream is staying live for the next game as well. One $15 purchase will get you access to both contests. Bird cuts it to 16. And more of this has to happen for Father Judge. They, they broke that really well. Sharif Jackson with an easy one off the feed from Travis Reed. Yeah, Ted, I mean, to, to piggyback off your point right there, I think it's the confidence that Roman Catholic plays with. You can see it on the court all the way from up here in the booth. I mean, just doing a great job of breaking these sets and, and, and passing the ball so effectively. There was a lot of great media before this game, and I, I saw one of the quotes that you know, this team, this Roman team, there's been three versions of this team. Yeah. With Jackson being out and with... Uh, well, Cabe Goss was Cabe out Goss twice. Cabe Goss was out twice, so... Nope. Just an unbelievable job by Coach McNesby. And now they're fully healthy. They got guys like Sebastian Edwards who couldn't hit that one. Scary. But guys that can spread the floor, and then you got to commit to Sharif Jackson. Rocco Westfield, that's his second triple of the night. Timeout, Father Judge. One timeout remains for the Crusaders of Father Judge. And we talk about this all the time, particularly as we tick down to two minutes, Ted. But without the college and NBA rules, where at some point under two minute, under one minute, where the clock stops it's after tough. made baskets. Yeah, it's tough. You can only stop the clock one more time. Well, I was going to ask you guys, judged. maybe it's a conversation you want to have between games is, what is your opinion on it? Danny, what's your opinion on, on high school shot clock? Yeah, well, I mean, it, it, there's definitely been a lot of debate about it. Um, I mean, I think that, it, it, I mean, really, think about how tough it would be to install a shot clock in some of these gyms that we're talking about, old sure. gyms that really haven't had much renovation in terms of the scoreboard, in terms of the clock. Uh, for you know decades and decades, so I think that you know it's, it, it's it may not be an urgent issue, um, but it definitely affects the pace of play, um, and also I think it'll affect scouting as well. I mean, they, the coaches want to see players that can move quickly. And, you know, when when you get into, into college and you have you know a shot clock right there, they want to see a translatable game right. where you can move quick with that that clock counting down. So yeah. there there are so many questions surrounding it. Um, I really don't have a stance whether it's good or bad. Well, we're gonna see we're gonna see right here about composure. Uh, can, can Judge put some pressure on yeah. the Cahillites, miss some free throws, and can they get hot? There's two, 204 left. Of course, any shot clock thing and rule change will come down to the PIAA. The only thing, Danny, is there's a lot of stakeholders that would argue it is an urgent issue. Yeah. But we all go by the bylaws of the NFHS and the PIAA. And until that time comes, we play on. Third team foul against Father Judge. Still one more to give. They'll have to start thinking about giving those fouls soon. Again, stay with us post game one because they're going to get these games started. The second game started very quickly. And we're going to go down and try to get a post game interview. Father Judge is going to have to come give the foul here. Too much time coming off the clock. Yep. And an easy one for Travis Reed. Beautiful execution in the half court by Roman Catholic. He's got 12, he's in double figures as well. Rocco Westfield, his third triple of the night. The class of 2026, another one of those guys that will be part of the solution going forward. Reed goes to get it, Bobby Cottrell. And Cottrell still met with a lot of contact going up right there. No whistles in the play. Puts that one up like it's nothing. Kevar Kennedy, how hard has he worked here today? There's Lilly on the finish. Just 
Sammy Jackson now pulls this one back under one minute to play. Father Judge still has to give one more foul, and the following foul would put them into the bonus. Chris Roantree, I think, is begging them to foul, but Anthony Lilly blocks the shot. Not a good decision to go up with that one. 12-point lead, Westfield. Yes. Whoa. Hello. Nine-point game, and Father Judge, here's the problem, calls their final timeout. Yeah, it's tough. By the way, Westfield with four threes on the night. <laughs> yeah. I think that one. Three of them in here in the yep, fourth in, quarter. In the quarter. That one was from the Skuko. <laughs> but here's the problem. Even if it's three three-point baskets and Roman Catholic doesn't make a single free throw the rest of the way, Roman Catholic's being told in that huddle right now that when the ball goes through the rim, let the referee grab it, right. put it yep. back into play, take your three, four seconds. They have three timeouts that they can clock it. So Roman Catholic can realistically take 13, 14 seconds off the clock in terms of between the time that the ball goes through the hoop, when it's put back into play, and when they want to inbound it with three, three and a half seconds into that five second count. So that's 15 of 34 seconds to play. That's the challenge here without any timeouts left. We had a good view of that, of uh, the Roman huddle and everyone completely engaged with Coach McNesby looking him right in the eye. Um, Judge has to hope for a loss of composure. And Sharif Jackson is fouled. And missed the foul shots. Fourth team foul called against Father Judge. The Crusaders, if they do come up short, their season will end. Tantalizing fashion. They did not get enough points in the regular season. They were effectively one regular season short, went the regular season win, short of that win against Archbishop Wood in the quarterfinals being enough to get to the 6A state playoff. So as much as John Mosco and that staff hate to say it, with Chris Roantree coming from their staff and being on that staff for so many years, they've been Roman Catholic fans here tonight. Yeah. And the Cahillites are about to punch Archbishop Wood's ticket for the PIAA state tournament. Yeah, that'll be really interesting to see, Bob, how that, uh, that Wood team bounces back from a really heartbreak loss on their home court and plays into the PIAA cha uh, championship, that it, is. It also cements Roman Catholic as the top 6A team in the Philadelphia Catholic League. They will play the 6A winner of the Philadelphia Public League in a District 12 championship game that will determine seeding in the PIAA state playoffs. A Roman Catholic team that won the state title two years ago and lost in overtime last year in the state final. Derek Morton Rivera, that's well short. And with 22 seconds to play, Father Judge may call off the dogs. Looks like Coach Roantree getting, he's going to. Wow, and yeah, yeah Sammy Jackson could yes, not move did. on the baseline. That was on a missed basket and a dead ball out of bounds on the baseline. After a made basket, you can move up and down. Yep. But Father Judge is putting in the reserves. The upperclassmen and certainly the key contributors. A lot of them coming back, though, next year. Here's an open three in the corner. That's well long. And it's Roman Catholic basketball with 16 seconds left. That shot there from Calvin Starks Walden, the senior guard. No team since North Catholic, a now shuttered North Catholic in 2008. No team not named Roman Catholic, Newman Garetti, or Archbishop Wood have won a Catholic League championship since that 2008 year, going on 16 years. Roman Catholic is going to have an opportunity to play for yet another title on Monday night. The Kaolites have done it again. The Kaolites go right back to the Philadelphia Catholic League final. I mean, what an incredible performance, Ted. I mean, this, this K Lights team plays like a bunch of professionals on the court. I mean, I have been so impressed with how they play in transition. Uh, they have smart offensive opportunities. 
um, and they really capitalized on their ability to use that interior, then also swing the ball out and yeah. shoot some great threes. Yeah, and, and from a judge perspective, from the Crusaders, like I said, they may be a year early here, yep. um, but they should be really proud of the season that they had. They brought life back into the basketball program there on a great job by uh, Coach Roan Tree. Um, so now the rivalry in the Northeast with Ryan and Judge is not just that the games will now mean something a little more. Um, they were just a little short tonight. I think if they hit some shots early, I think the tone of this game kind of changes. So Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, when you saw the start of the game, you saw Judge taking a lot of those threes, and of course it didn't fall, but, you know, it was, uh, they did a great job. I mean, of course, Father Judge needs to hang their heads high after a great run to the semifinal. We'll send this one down to Bob, though. Head coach Chris McDesby, Trey Jackson. That way, guys. Ted, Danny, thank you. We are here with a victorious Chris McNesby and, of course, Sharif Jackson. Let's start with you, Sharif. You were unbelievable down low there tonight. Got the ball to you at will, and you were able to get it up and off the glass. Willing passer. What went well out there for you tonight? For me especially, I think it was starting the flow, right? Earlier in the game, not a lot of made shots, but as we started going on, getting those good passes from those doubles, not only from me, but from the other teammates. He's getting those good double passes out for those threes. really helps kickstart the game. Yet another opportunity play at the Palestra, what does this mean to you and this Roman Catholic A lot. I mean, I mean, I'm one of the few guys on this team who's, who's been here first of all, so I want to share that chat excitement coming out here on Monday, playing along with all the guys, trying to get that chip. Tell me about this particular team. What makes this brand of Roman Catholic basketball and this group so special? I would say especially championship. I know a lot of kids say that every single year. But this team, I feel like, especially as I was supposed to be a leader, but I came out and lost smart guys around me. So we all had this collective leadership and the team. All really hype, all really taking initiative on this team, trying to get those wins. Sharif, thanks for your time. Enjoy this one. Right, thank you. Chris McNesby with us. Congratulations. Another year with Roman Catholic in the final. How's it feel? It feels great. I mean, it's such a great group of seniors uh, to have these kids get to the final game is uh, really special. Uh, great group of kids, and you want it for them. What challenge did Father Judge bring here tonight? You guys had lost to them in the regular season, and you guys made some adjustments. Yeah, uh, they're a really good team, really well coached. Uh, they've been shooting the three really, really well. Uh, I think they missed a few uh, today, and, and, and we capitalized from that. So, uh, But they're a great team, and we knew it was going to be a tough game. Monday night again for Roman Catholic in the final. Yeah, we're excited to be there, and we'll see who we're going to play. Either way, it's going to be a great game. Chris, thanks for doing this, and congratulations again. Appreciate it. Thank you.